Hello everyone, welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On General Hospital today, Nicholas exposes part of his purpose to Austin, Carly cautions Ava not to trust Austin, and Esm learns about Spencer and Trina's trip. A woman dressed sharply in a white pencil skirt suit and black heels enters the Metro Court and approaches Tracy. Tracy is relieved to finally see her and conduct business in person. The camera swings up to Blair, who is poised to take what is rightfully hers. Tracy reminds her that what is hers is now hers because she paid a high price for it. Blair simply wants her ex-husband Martin to remarry since he is draining her finances. Tracy claims Lucy will be broke and married to Martin as soon as she obtains deception. Blair emphasizes that it's not only about the money, but also about getting the little people acknowledged and exposing corporate America's greed. She explains that the deceptor was her invention, which she never finished, and that Marty shared it with Lucy in order to win her over. Tracy observes that Lucy isn't exactly a knockout. Blair requests that the judge halt sales of the Deceptor. Tracy claims that they are frozen, as are the company's stocks, and that Deception will be bankrupt by the time they get to court. Blair inquires about Jackson, and Tracy thanks her for the referral, stating that he was excellent. Blair claims he's also attractive to look at. Tracy didn't notice, since she's intent on regaining her voting rights from Lucy and won't stop until she does. Blair wonders why Tracy despises Lucy so much. Tracy refers to her as a bark who bit her brother, and if she obtains deception, she won't have to worry about Lucy being parked with her family's business. Tracy was initially uninterested in ELQ, according to Blair, so what changed? Tracy describes her family as difficult, greedy, and dysfunctional at best. She wishes to move on from this subject, but Blair recognizes that there is more to this for her than just voting rights. Martin and Lucy enter, when Martin notices Blair and exclaims, God, not her. He suggests they go to the PC grill, but Lucy refuses to hide from Tracy, whom she believes Martin is alluding to. Lucy wonders who the blonde with Tracy is as they take a seat. Martin insists on going to the PC grill, but Lucy declines, so Martin determines he'll need shots. Lucy rants about Tracy and how she utilized BLQ to steal information from them about the Deceptor. Martin turns to face Blair and Tracy. Lucy is concerned that Tracy will win the lawsuit, and she shouts that the Deceptor was her idea with his assistance. Martin reiterates that he had nothing to do with anything, and that there is no reason to pull him into it. She claims she would never have thought of it if it hadn't been for him. Lucy ultimately believes Martin is correct and that they should go to the PC grill since she does not want to be in the same room as Tracy. She excuses herself to change her clothes. Meanwhile, Tracy explains to Blair that she doesn't do anything for one reason, but this is business, and her father taught her that opportunities are created rather than given, she believes that once an opportunity presents itself, you must seize it. Tracy thanks her for meeting her and excuses herself. Blair walks over to Martin and kisses his cheek, saying, Hello, sweetheart. Martin frowns. Trish brings Anna an envelope from Dante as she and Valentin sit down for supper on the patio. When she opens it, it reveals a flight manifest with Valentin's name on it. Anna offers Valentin the documentation and inquires as to its veracity. The manifest is for a trip to New York City on the night Anna's house burned down. He acknowledges it, and Pikeman has summoned him. Anna interrogates him for information. Valentin claims that Pikeman was concerned about Sonny, and that they continue to be, and that they needed to consult with him. Anna questions why he feels the need to lie to her about going to ELQ. Valentin reveals that Pikeman didn't want to risk meeting here. Anna claims she's referring to the lies he tells her, not Pikeman, and she wonders how much else he's withholding from her. Valentin claims to love her, but Anna tells him he can't keep saying that to justify his lies. Valentin explains that he's trying to keep his relationship with Pikeman distinct from hers, but she reminds him that when she was carrying his message to Sunny, shots were fired at her and Sunny. 
he confesses it was a mistake, and she worries how many other lies and errors he's keeping from her. There is nothing else, he vows. She inquires as to why he was drawn into Pikeman in the first place. He confesses that it was greed on his part, and that he was young and had nothing to lose. He now has everything to lose, and Pikeman is dangerous, so having them as a friend rather than an enemy is preferable. Anna proposes skipping supper and ordering room service from the suite. When Anna and Valentine return to the suite, they discover it has been wrecked. They draw their weapons and notice clothing with what appears to be blood splashed all over it. Valentine notices ink on Anna's clothes rather than blood as she walks to the bathroom. A message is scrawled on the mirror in the bathroom. It says, You think you got away with it, but you didn't, that you're safe, but you're not. Esme leaves after delivering documents to Alexis in her workplace. Alexis phones Gregory to inform him that she will be at the office for another hour if he requires her assistance. Spencer enters and asks for her assistance as a fellow Cassadine. Spencer reveals that the Cassadine estate is set to be transferred to him because his father divorced six months ago, but he has no idea how to decipher the legal language in the papers he was given. Alexis expresses her willingness to assist. Alexis examines the document and states that it is highly complicated and that she will need time to get back to him. Spencer is grateful to her and to his family for their assistance. Alexis is grateful for him as well, and despite the fact that they are Cassadines, they share an unbreakable kinship. Spencer observes that this does not apply to his father, who has let him down yet again and has walked out on a baby. Alexis adds that there is no explanation for a parent abandoning their child, but she knows Nicholas loves him, and given how he was reared, he didn't have a reference for being a father. As Spencer asks Alexis for another favor about Ace, Esm sneaks outside the office. He tells Trainer that he and Trainer are traveling to New York, and asks her to keep an eye on Esm and Ace. Alexis claims Esm is doing well here, so why does he believe she requires supervision? Spencer can't help but remember the old Esm, and she's already attempted to flee with Ace, so he feel better knowing Ace was safe. Esm is shocked and stumbles in, claiming she forgot to deliver the payroll papers. Alexis thanks her and tells her to take them to accounting before paycheck. Spencer praises Esm for her assistance before she departs. She claims they are family, which includes Esm, so perhaps he should try to believe her. That, he claims, is easier said than done. They depart as Esme returns and discovers Alex's office is dark. Trina arrives at her dorm to find everything still in a state of disarray. Joss reveals that Dex came over and distracted them. Trina inquires if she was nervous the first time she met Dex. Joss is perplexed as to why she is asking. Trina informs Joss that Spencer is bringing her to Manhattan for the weekend, and that this will be their first time alone together. Joss wonders if she's prepared for this, as sex pushes things to a whole new level. Trina is aware of it and can't stop thinking about it. Joss wants to make sure Trina isn't feeling pressed, but she isn't. Trina informs her about Spencer's original plans to visit the islands, but she didn't want to stay gone for too long given her family's predicament and the start of school, so Manhattan was a compromise. She tells Joss about the trip's plans and how it feels like the appropriate thing for them. Joss is delighted for both of them. She knows Spencer is a decent guy, and Trina is the best thing that has ever happened to him. Carly returns home and discovers Ava in her living room. Ava explains that she dropped Avery off for the night, is now with Pilar, and has a late night with collectors. Carly confronts her about knowing Austin and Mason have a crush on her, and now Sonny has Drew wondering why Austin traveled to Pentonville. Ava is taken aback by the news of Austin's trip. Carly claims she's assisting Drew in assisting Sonny, which implies she's also assisting Ava. Carly tells how Sonny was able to have the accusations against him dismissed, and the information Austin took to his boss implies that Austin and Mason's boss have ties to the FBI. She suspects Austin and Mason learned something about her, which their supervisor may report to the FBI of Earth, says Sonny is doing what he can for Avery, and that, given the circumstances, she would prefer Avery to stay here for a week or so. 
Carly says Avery is welcome to stay as long as he needs to. Carly informs Ava that whatever is going on with Austin, he is concealing information from her. Therefore, she should not trust him for the sake of Avery. Austin goes to his Pultok home to discover Nicholas packed and ready to leave. Nicholas explains that it is time to say farewell. Austin believes Nicholas is returning to Port Charles, but he says he needs to tie off loose ends in Europe and will leave in a few hours. He explains that his mother is still seeking for him and that he needs to let her know he's alive without being noticed. Austin can't believe he's still going to leave Ava in limbo, and she expresses regret over his death. Nicholas jokes that Ava isn't prone to feeling guilty. Austin wonders what else is going on because it can't be just Ava and his mother. Nicholas says that he has been missing for six months and has been thought dead by the Casa Dean estate, therefore control will be given to Spencer. The only way to stop this is to demonstrate that he is still alive. Austin observes that this isn't the first time he's pretended to be dead and wonders how he could do this to his son. Nicholas says he doesn't need to justify his actions to Spencer and that once he has control of the money, he is unlikely to give it back. Nicholas, according to Austin, does not think highly of his son. Nicholas claims his son is a Cassadine, and he wouldn't expect him to act any differently than he does, therefore he can't give Spencer control over him. Nicholas receives a text message informing him that his car has arrived. He praises Austin for his assistance and departs for a family gathering. Chase informs Brooke Lynn on the next episode of General Hospital. It's too late for that. This isn't a coincidence, Valentin warns Anna, and I'm not taking any chances. Lucy informs Nana that she must replace her as soon as possible. Blair warns Martin that this will cost him a lot of money. Alexis admits to Finn that he was correct and that it was a bad decision. Gregory informs Esme that she appears to be off to a good start. That will be the death of him. Stella cries at Marshall. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.